seems like a lot of Hollywood-related drama has been shared recently in the mainstream media. There have been several incidents between stand-up comedians and now we're about halfway a public defamation trial between actors JD and AH. With a war going on between Russia and Ukraine, why do such minor incidents receive this much attention? It blows my mind. How is this even possible? Aren't we at risk of losing our way entirely as a result of such superficial distractions? I mean, I find myself at a loss for words almost when I see the amount of attention that is being given to this stuff day after day. Thank you for this question. It is a very interesting one that we would love to dive deeper into. But first, let us ask you a question in return. When you say, aren't we at risk of losing our way entirely? What is it that you exactly mean by that? Well, with this, I'm just assuming that most people get their news from the mainstream media. With this being the kind of information they're being fed, what hope is left for us? Doesn't this type of information promote people to turn into a bunch of dumbed-down, sensation-seeking drama addicts? Alright, so if we get you, what you're saying is that you are choosing to see humanity as unable to take something useful from this type of information, rather than seeing them capable of using it in a way that promotes their spiritual growth. Ah, yeah, that would be the more subtle description, probably. But yes, that is indeed what my main concern is about. Your concern, smiles. Concern to us is just another word to express your conscious or subconscious decision to focus more on the idea of some undesired version of reality than you might on a preferred one. You, however, remain in control at all times over the direction of your attention. Winks. Do you not trust that, on some higher level, you called this forth? That these games you choose to play surrounding your Hollywood actors may perhaps even contribute to the unfolding of a greater, deeper exploration of the self for all involved? Um, no, I really hadn't looked at it that way so far. Well, would you like to look at it that way with us? Sure, by all means. All right, well, pauses. You have heard us speak about what we call your physical dream reality, right? When we say this, we quite literally mean that the reality you are currently perceiving as surrounding you is a dream. You are individually and collectively dreaming that you are focused in a physical reality. And though the stage is a prop, the experiences you are having on it are real. Each and every one of these experiences, every breath you take, contributes to the greater journey of you, awakening to the all that is, God or source energy that resides within yourself. Now you have left yourself all kinds of instruction manuals along the way, so to speak, to help remind yourself of the fact that this is what you are doing. A great amount of teachers, gurus, storytellers, artists, inventors, healers and others have all in their own way laid out the fundamental principles of being in this dream and how to navigate it. They offered you reflections to understand it better and to wake up to the fact that physical reality is a mirror and that all you witness inside of it can be used to assist you on your awakening journey if you choose to look at life this way. As what you put in is what you get back in all cases. In your current day world, as you observe it, a big portion of those teachings have been encapsulated in your books, your movies, in songs and music, and in many other forms of what you call the arts. Acting, singing, dancing are all forms of channeling. And you will find that the individuals who feel called to engage in such a career often have a certain kind of sensitivity about them, which is in fact what enables them to play such parts to begin with. 
as they have to resonate with or harmonize with the role of the other person, fictional or non-fictional, doesn't matter. There is an energetic reality to the idea of the part they play, and they often intuitively understand how to breathe even more life into this until the persona is lifted out of the books and comes to life in your version of perceived reality, instead of remaining within the higher dimensional realms of what you call your imagination or your thoughts. A good actor offers you this service whilst fulfilling their own inner calling. The inner calling represents the energetic ebb and flow within the collective field they are picking up upon, perhaps without even being consciously aware of it. This is what adds the magic to the embodiment of a part in a play, to the writing of a song or what have you. True artistic fulfillment comes not from the paycheck or from the praise given afterwards, though surely it adds into the mix for the mind. Yet true fulfillment for the heart comes from having allowed an idea to be born into your world in a way wherein it previously did not yet exist. With this birth, others were offered fulfillment along the way. This is why the relationship between the listener and a song or between any artist and their audience, is a co-creation. Without the desire of the audience, there would be no inspiration for the artist. It simply wouldn't be relevant for the expansion of the environment in that case. This also works the other way around. When there is inspiration, this alone lets you know that there then must be a person in your world, or even any other world, that receives or could receive satisfaction from your creational act. Yet, the first to enjoy your creation shall always be your own soul. Your soul knows that you acting on your inspiration is the same thing as saying, thank you for this and yes more please. Children intuitively know that following their creative impulses equals the celebration of the soul in the physical form. They understand it is an important part of the most fundamental expression of the self. Now, as we said before, you call forth any event that receives a large amount of attention from the public eye. No matter how mundane or superficial you may personally believe these things to be, you as a collective create mirror reflections for yourselves containing not necessarily everything you want to see, but certainly the things you need to see. And by this we mean those who get in touch with this information and feel that it quote-unquote speaks to them in one way or another, those are the ones for whom this information is meant, so to speak. Those are the ones by whom it had to be perceived. Now, let us point out here that also when you feel specifically annoyed by a certain bit of information, the intensity of that emotion reveals to you you are energetically connected to the theme or storyline which is being reflected back to you in that moment. Of course, not all information you observe is directly relevant for you. If something simply doesn't draw your interest or attention, or you find it effortless to detach yourself from a certain idea, then perhaps its only relevance within your version of reality is for that idea to remain as an aspect in the background of reality as you perceive it. Your emotional guiding compass will help reveal what for you can be used as a gateway of opportunity or as a springboard for spiritual expansion. These are the things that often invite you to leave your comfort zone or discover something new about yourself or the world as you perceived it up until then. Now, having said all this, let's have a look at that defamation trial. First of all, since you brought up the comparison, instead of looking at the differences between the war in Ukraine and this type of quote-unquote Hollywood drama, as you call it, let's have a look at some of the overlapping themes. For example, in both of these reflections, though be it in a very different way, clearly certain boundaries have been crossed. 
In both cases, there are two seeming opposing sides, and there is the assumption of a perpetrator and a victim role. Both in a war, as well as in a trial, you see the crystallization of the ideas of attack and defense poured into a specific structure. Whatever rules or guidelines there are, these have been defined within systems largely supported by your society. Both the legal system, as well as your national or international military services, are sustained as a result of an energy exchange in which most of you, knowingly or unknowingly, are involved. And of course, here we refer to your governmental taxes, on which we shall elaborate more some other time. And finally, much publicity has been given to both of these situations. Your media play a key role in the distribution of several narratives along the way. And a large portion of your population gets to tune in with the energy of these ideas, whilst in the process of making up their own mind. It can easily be said that many survivors of DV have gone through their own version of a war. Though the storylines may have been sculpted differently, the level of physical, emotional and mental trauma can be the same. In a war between countries or cultures, there is a much more publicly visible aspect of the conflicting energies as expressed by the collective in that way. This often comes along with an intensified pressure regarding expected responses, opinions or behavior. Thanks to your media, this pressure no longer limits itself to the citizens of the countries directly involved in the conflict, but has now extended itself to the citizens of basically any other country as well. This, as you may have noticed, may appear to initially cause additional conflicts, sometimes even between what you may understand to be total strangers on your social media, as they continue the dialogue or the conflict amongst themselves, voting for either one side or the other. Though within a relationship, a family or small community, any type of violence may seem to be much more out of the ordinary. It still represents a power struggle, a friction between different parties and a game of seeming opposites seeking a certain balance. The concept of the quote-unquote outside world, national or international playing fields are often kept out of such private conflicts, however. There may, therefore, appear to be more neutral zones available to those who experience this type of circumstances. Yet the outside world may not be experienced as neutral or safe at all by those who feel themselves under the oppression of an aggressor. Often they carry the friction of the conflict along on the inside, wherever they go. All of this, however, both the international as well as the private wars, so to speak, are the crystallized results of what once started as a non-physical potential for conflict. Since you came to play a game of great self-discovery and deep transformation, you inserted the illusion of there being a difference between the two, even though in fact they are one. You explore and transform challenging situations both individually and on a collective scale. And now you have come to a point in your evolution where you are ready to truly become nitty-gritty with it, so to speak. This is what will eventually allow the curtain to fall. And by that we mean it will become more and more obvious that there is no division really between that what is imagined, dream or idea, so non-physical, and that what eventually crystallizes before you as the physical dream. You see, you are right in the middle of opening up the doors to a much more telepathically connected way of living. And in order to allow this to manifest, you will come up with one after another excuse to tune in with certain topics that move you. Until all that still wanted to be seen has been seen, felt, transformed and integrated. And since you cannot do this all by yourself, but you can create a reality where you get to benefit from other people's processes, you have manifested a version of reality wherein you get to explore these ideas with your collective. You've created a reality playing field wherein you share this exploration with others. One reflection of your interconnectedness in this inner exploration 
is the outer reflection of what you call your social media platforms. And as you may have noticed, there too, surprising shifts are currently taking place, which impact the levels of freedom of speech needed for this shift to take place. Any step into the direction of a more open playing field when it comes to freedom of expression shows you the momentum that is presently available for you to use such tools as a stepping stone in the exploration of getting to know yourself better if you wish. As anything in your physical dream reality can be used as a tool in the deeper exploration of the self when used with clear intent and from a place of love and centeredness. And you will be able to trust that it shall be that same centeredness that will guide you away from such platforms were they to become too restricted, too rigid, or were they to no longer serve you on your journey. Now, this may differ per person. You all play your own unique parts on this stage. As always, allow your own intuition to guide you. Along those lines, the concept of your COVID pandemic offered a great breakthrough in many ways for humanity to get you to be focused on the same page. Please realize that by this, we do not mean that you were asked to all respond in the same way. Far from that. Much more so, you were given an excuse or reason to start exploring one concept or idea from all possible directions. As all of your individual and unique voices and perceptions were and still are of major importance in the solving of that collective puzzle, which is still in the process of unfolding. Little side note, Arjunas let me know there will be a whole separate section on this, um, let's say, chapter in our collectively co-created book later down the line. So, just saying. At this point in your time, you will continue to offer yourself more and more reflections at an increasingly rapid pace in order to allow yourself and your collective to transform all of the unaddressed darkness that is still lingering around in your version of reality. The reason for this is exactly because you have reviewed and transformed so much of it already. You have already transformed so much of the darkness and to such a deep degree that now it is time to clean out the final corners and look at all of that which has been swept underneath the carpet for all those years, as nothing can remain hidden in the darkness forever. Discussing the topic of DV in a more public manner, you in a sense help to lift up that carpet yet a little higher, and in doing so, you reveal what has appeared to be a mostly hidden war to the surface level. You have brought it up onto the table and into the collective consciousness field, so a light can be shed on it. This defamation trial might be particularly effective, however as it points at a whole spectrum of hidden wars and silent suffering that may have been previously invisible to most. Alongside certain accusations, it also addresses psychological patterns and the impact of several types of trauma that can be adopted by you along the way. Many of you have your own personal stories to tell when it comes to these topics, and so as you respond to these ideas or process them in your own way, you subconsciously practice to access the vibration of empathy within yourselves, both individually as well as a collective. This is the case even while on the level of the physical dream it may appear as if the majority is simply attempting to figure out their own beliefs as they observe all what is being presented on the stand. As all of this unfolds, one could almost say that in this quote-unquote case, no pun intended, everything is on trial. Not just the two individuals who appear to be opposing one another, but... Also, the stigmas surrounding male and female roles in your culture and the entire legal system itself. The way the mainstream media and certain institutes decide to present a specific individual as a spokesperson against DV and for what reasons they do. Not to forget the entire concept of fame and fortune or what this previously meant to many. 
All of that and much more right now is being brought up for review. And somehow, subconsciously, your collective is aware of this. Those of you who felt inspired to observe the developments of this case up close, and more so, who have allowed themselves to also observe the conversations among other observers of this trial on your social media, to many of you it may have become obvious that for the first time in history, particularly since the entire situation is being televised, an enormous audience feels inspired to not only follow along, but to also investigate along and to deeply feel into the levels of the seed or reality of every single segment presented to them in this way. Again, the main actors in all of this are doing the collective a great favor in allowing you to practice a version of reality where you are all connected as one and able to consciously pull information from the collective energy field. When it comes to the emotional aspect of this investigation, some observers of this co-created event use it in seeking an outlet for their anger or frustration. Others judge or joke about it, but never before were there this many who stepped in and mediated in between the comments who bring in nuances, who feel inspired to share their own stories, creating many miniature bubbles of people comforting each other and expressing their love and understanding. This can be seen as a collective healing journey on many levels if you choose to look at it that way. And when it comes to the mental aspects of this investigation, Dozens of body language experts, lawyers and psychologists who have created their own independent media channels have started to share their own observations with the world. They too invite the observers to see beyond what they're being told, to use their intuition to understand where someone might be coming from as they choose to lie or speak the truth about one thing or another. And in many cases, they remind you of the fact that it takes a victim to make a victim. Many more of you may begin to realize as a result of this unfolding that every type of manipulation, no matter in what form, eventually comes from a place of fear. One of the fascinating things in these type of mass events is the level of disbelief that so many of you are now invited to play with. Often, disbelief is just a temporary survival technique for the rational mind to allow itself some time to become more consciously aware of a yet-to-be-acknowledged type of negative judgment. This judgment concerns the self as much as the other. You see, when you can't believe someone would do a thing like that, dot dot dot, you fill in the blank, it means that you are as upset with yourself for not feeling able to process a certain concept as much as you are frustrated with the other for presenting you with an excuse for this feeling of powerlessness. Whatever it is that triggers a state of disbelief, for most of you, its initial function is to help you become consciously aware of a seemingly hard boundary within your current belief system. It basically says, this here appears to be a dead end. I can't see how this, you fill in the blank, will ever fit into my version of reality. Which, if you choose to look at it from a place of love and compassion for the struggling mind, can also be translated as this here lets me know that there absolutely must be room for expansion for there is no way that my ability to love could be limited by this one thing alone. This was followed by a little wink from Arjun, by the way. Once you find the compassion for your own set of beliefs, you simultaneously open the door for compassion towards the other. And so, becoming consciously aware of a state of disbelief whenever it pops up for anyone can become a powerful tool for transformation, since the ultimate trial plays out inside of you after all. This of course doesn't mean you have to agree with what you see, nor that you are asked to condone or promote it. It just means you have given yourself permission to see yet another aspect of life from the level of your higher self or your soul, if you will, by allowing the rational mind 
to drop its insistence regarding the observed situation, saying that it simply has no place in creation. The beauty is that when you can allow it to be as it is in your observation, you then as a collective will open the doors to find new ways to respond to it, whatever it is you are looking at. There are ways to let go of something from a place of inner balance that do not require you to suppress something in order to eliminate it from your reality. And there are ways to continue to enjoy certain things in life without demanding they stick around or come to you in only one way or through only one specific person. This trial contains some profound lessons that most of you are still in the process of integrating in your own lives. Whatever triggers you in that moment, you choose to define yourself in relation to that thing, person or event. If you can give birth to that initial definition, even if it contains repulsion or disgust, that means you contain the capability to transform it into something else. You see, you've invited it to dance with you way before it crystallized into your awareness. And now here it is. And you get to choose how you wish to dance with it. Practicing your moves one step at a time. And certainly with mass events such as these. And when you decide to all dance together, you get to learn much faster. And you get to integrate it all much faster. As when you were to do it all by yourself. A fundamental message of many of these things as you allow them to manifest before you in this day and age is that you are not alone. You can choose to stand together in ways that reach far and wide beyond the illusion of boundaries between cultures, countries, political opinions or seemingly limiting laws. Just like the right book falls into your hands at the right time, and just like the painter feels inspired to paint exactly that which wishes to be translated into their version of reality at that moment, just like that, the universe will always find the route of least resistance to get a large segment of your population involved in solving a puzzle, any puzzle, that still needs some looking at. As in doing so, you tighten the bond between your own individual and within your collective consciousness of the relationship between that which appears unseen and that what manifests for you in the physical dream. You tighten it and thus lift it from the collective subconscious into the collective consciousness level. This will happen more and more especially when a verbal communication population is about to take its first steps into a more consciously perceivable telepathic connection. The idea behind a defamation trial may be to restore or protect the concept of a person's identity or status, yet you are the ones in the process of identifying and rediscovering yourselves. Having this storyline play out in public court, including this level of engagement, can be looked at, therefore, if you wish, as an effective type of inner preparation for the other, much larger puzzles that you are yet to manifest for yourselves in the following years. Realize, if you will, that with every individual and collective puzzle you feel excited to explore within yourself, you get better and better at discovering how it is that you create such events in your version of reality and to what degree your personal beliefs, intentions and actions play into the mix of such events unfolding. The more you allow yourself to think out of the box, to see through and beyond the illusion of limitation as these are being presented to you via your media, the more of you will begin to recognize the movie that you are all co-creating together right now at this moment and the gifts that are hiding in every single scene as it is being presented to you. Even if some of these scenes do not speak to you directly, do you think you can play with this? Wow, yes, I absolutely believe I can. Thank you so much for these reflections. It means a lot. 
It is our pleasure and passion to dance with you in this way. We wish you a wonderful rest of your day. Namaste. Namaste.